The current state and the future of Halo Infinite is both clouded and incredibly clear. Before release, I remember seeing content creators talk about how they were so ready to blow up with Halo Infinite and how excited they were for their friends to finally get the recognition they deserved as Halo content creators. The trailers and whatnot all looked great, and it seemed like the Halo community was genuinely excited for the newest installment in the franchise. I'm Holotide, and in this video, I'm going to give a history of what has happened with Halo Infinite over the last few years, and then talk about the future and what we can expect. This video will have timestamps or chapters, so if you want to skip something, feel free. But I think it might be important to have a full picture. Remember, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like. Also, leave a comment. I do read every single one of them. Just remember to be respectful and constructive. And if you like Halo content, I'm like one of 10 Halo content creators left out there and I could be your third favorite. So if you enjoy Halo content, make sure you subscribe. Over a span of two years, Halo Infinite has navigated a turbulent path from launch to a journey of redemption. The game encountered numerous obstacles, including a postponed release and initial content shortages, which resulted in a significant decline in its player base. That player base reaching more than 20 million players, according to 343. However, through continuous updates and restructuring efforts within 343, the game steadily improved by introducing fresh content modes and addressing community concerns. I am by no means saying that Halo Infinite is perfect and is without its flaws now because I believe there are many. I believe that it has reestablished its identity in line with fans' expectations of the Halo franchise. The road ahead remains uncertain with ongoing updates promised, but no real concrete plans for major expansions, new campaigns within Halo Infinite. It does seem like they're winding down. Again, the initial release left much to be desired with the lack of content leading to dwindling player numbers. The lack of Forge, a custom games browser, having only, I believe, five different playlists for multiplayer at launch. It became apparent that the launch was underwhelming. It felt like 343 and Halo Infinite were so incredibly behind the start line of what they wanted to have at launch that we are just now seeing, two years later, a full package. But since then, there has been significant restructuring at 343 Industries with key personnel changes and a renewed focus on content delivery. Seasons and updates, even though there was that dark period where there was like an entire year where we didn't get a new season, they began to introduce more substantial content, new maps, modes, progression systems, Forge, custom games browser, firefight, the list goes on, leading to a more positive reception from players and a bit of a resurgence in interest in the game. Before release, Infinite was described as being a platform for the Halo franchise for the next decade. It was intended that the game would be added to over time, and it's speculated that this is where all the expansions would be placed for the campaign. With the open world of Halo divided into areas, we thought that they would be adding more biomes, more missions, and maybe more game modes. This is sadly not the case. The subsequent seasons have introduced new maps, with Season 2 bringing Breaker and Catalyst, the Winter Update bringing Argyle, Detachment, and Empyrean. Season 3 brought Chasm, Cliffhanger, and Oasis. Season 4 brought Dredge, Forest, Scar, and Solitude. Season 5 had Forbidden and Prism. And the new Content Update 29 brought Illusion. The content updates are kind of confusing because we just had another new update where we got a new map called Elevation, but this is technically not a content update. It's just a new operation, so yeah. This also does not include the immense amount of Forge maps that were added within the Squad Battle playlist, which might be my favorite, and Husky Raid. I believe Halo Infinite is almost up to 60 total maps, including the Forge main ones by the community. Speaking of Forge, that was added to Halo Infinite with the Winter Update, and many of its systems are based on the core of the Slipspace engine. This Forge is probably the most powerful one that we have ever seen. I say probably, but it is. And came with a ton of new features and upgrades. Again, Forge came out 12 months after launch. And with that, we got the File Browser and the Custom Games Browser. 
when it released, it honestly felt like this was the first time that there was like real support happening for Halo Infinite and that we were finally getting somewhere. And honestly, I felt like this meant that Halo Infinite would be supported in the longer term. It does seem like 343 is relying heavily on user-generated content. And recently this has brought up a lot of, the word is not complaints, just suggestions that Microsoft or 343 should be paying forgers for their work. I'm interested to know in the comments down below how you feel about that. As somebody who does not forge because I'm stupid, I do think that there should be more than just like an armor coating and a nameplate. Something I want to quickly touch upon is the campaign again. We were basically promised to have split screen campaign co-op in response to the removal of it in Halo 5. That was delayed multiple times and just canceled. The game does support cross-platform play and cross-platform save progression now. With campaign network co-op introduced in the winter update in 2022, along with other features such as the ability to replay old missions. The only type of story progression we were getting was the multiplayer story progression, if you can remember the Lone Wolves, but that also ended prematurely. Along with the campaign, I will say that the music in Halo Infinite felt like a return to form, something that I really enjoyed, and I think it goes without saying that the aesthetic of Halo Infinite does feel like the old games. Something that does pale in comparison to, say, Halo 5 is the weapons within the game. There are variants for each weapon that you can use from the campaign within, like, Husky Raid and stuff like that. But we've only had one new weapon added with a variant, and that was the Bandit Rifle or the DMR. I truly think that this has led to fatigue with players because the sandbox does not feel like it is shaken up enough. We've had a few new equipment added throughout Halo Infinite's time but weapons really do change how people play the game. We've also received Firefight, although it is King of the Hill and it's very different than previous Firefights. The ability to use forgeable AI and having other forgers create their own Firefight maps has been incredible to see, and I do hope that Halo and 343 are able to incorporate those into an official playlist soon. With all of that out of the way, I think it's time to talk about the future. And honestly, that future is coming much faster for Halo Infinite, with it being theorized that it is now being sunset. 343 said themselves that they are working on new Halo experiences, and with the loss of seasons and the multiplayer narrative and switching to the operations format with mostly shop updates, I think it's safe to say Infinite won't reach that 10-year Halo platform dream. The community director also revealed in December of 2023 that 343 Industries is not currently developing any more campaign content for Halo Infinite. This truly does remind me of the Battlefront 2 kind of fiasco that we saw with EA and DICE. It really felt like they finally got Battlefront 2 to this point where it was fun to play, the microtransactions were not predatory, all this content had been added, and then they just ceased support for it to go work on 2042 which to this day I think is the biggest waste of resources. Like not even from me being a Star Wars fan, but just from like a business perspective, Star Wars basically prints money. And I do think that Battlefront 2 could have, it still could be going to this day. Now in business, it is a lot easier to just release something new instead of iterating on a failed launch of something. That's no different than gaming. First impressions are very important to gamers and... You know, it's very hard to win them back with their time after they've played something and have deemed it not worth it. I think that Halo Infinite suffers from this as well. Unless you're within the Halo community, you probably don't even realize all the changes and updates that have gone into this game. And even with something like Forge and all the AI and custom games browser, we haven't really seen, at least on the charts that we have access to, like on Steam, like a huge increase in the population, which is very unfortunate. But if anything, I think the failure of the launch of Halo Infinite has opened up more opportunities for 343 and Microsoft. We've seen a huge shakeup in the leadership. We've seen priorities start to shift. And maybe now we finally get those spin-off games. Recently, there have been a ton of games releasing that have been truly amazing. From Baldur's Gate and Elden Ring to Helldivers. I think a lot of devs and studios are going to see that and try to replicate it. I don't know if that means it's the end of the live service age, but we'll see what happens. As of right now, my main complaint with Halo Infinite is that it does feel like a shop update. I think the prices are 
way too expensive, especially for a game that we're probably not going to be able to take that stuff that we're buying into the next one. So I do feel like it's kind of a slap in the face to a lot of the people still, you know, playing Halo Infinite as their main game or just, you know, always coming back and picking up again. So that's something that I would love to see change. Now, this is the part of the video that might be extremely controversial, and that is that I have more hope for the next iteration of Halo games or, you know, just whatever the future is than I did before Halo Infinite launched. I truly do hope that we get back to a golden era of Halo gaming, but that still remains to be seen. That's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and I will catch you around the ring. Peace!